So how did purity culture get started? Okay, so it really began in the 1990s. Okay. And, it, you know, in the church, in the conservative evangelical church, and it was a response to a few things that were going on. Okay. okay? So there was obviously uh, the, there was a, the rise in teenage pregnancies. Mm -hmm. There was the AIDS epidemic coming out of the 80s and into the 90s. Mm -hmm. And because because young church girls were extremely affected by the AIDS pandemic. <laughs> Just OK, it was there and it <laughs> made a lot of people nervous. All right. And then and I don't know if you're if you remember this or not, but there was this, what I'll call the MTV culture. Mm -hmm. that really promoted this idea of kind of sexuality, especially like promiscuous sex, mm -hmm. and the freedom in sexuality really kind of brought it mainstream, if you were. Mm -hmm. And so I think purity culture was like a reaction to those few things. Why is it always reactions? It just because that the church is just hyper reactive in right, its but nature. What, what wasn't, wasn't the, MTV culture, a reaction to the church doing stuff previously. I mean, I think there, I think there's always this back and forth. Yeah, yeah, forthness of, and no one can never just be of, in the middle <laughs> of, of and in the church right. and out the church. And there's this always, I think there's always this back and forthness. Okay, yeah. So that's that. Well, and let me comment on a couple of things. Okay, in regards of how it got started, so. In the early 90s, you had things like the True Love Weight events. I don't know if you ever heard that. I've heard that before. Yeah, the True Love Weights. Um, and so it included like signing commitment cards. Like you were, So you would sign a card, you know, a purity pledge saying, I will not have sex before marriage. And mm -hmm. then you would, you know. And then you would have sex before marriage. <laughs> right. And then you'd have shame. Right. Anyway, but we'll right. get into that in a second. But so you had the, like the True Love Weights events. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and actually they had a, they did this one rally like in DC and it was this, I mean, I'm talking about like 25,000 students or something showed up for Just it. 25,000 <laughs> horny virgins showed up in DC. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> and so, but no, but and, I mean, so they had a commitment card over there and like the symbol of symbolism of it is pretty cool in, in, in the sense of, you had know, all these young people making these commitments. Okay. Like. I understand the intent of it, right? But the what they were teaching and the and the problem with how they were presenting it, that's the or, or the way they were which they were presenting it, that's the problem for me. And so you had true love weights. And then I really think purity culture kind of became like into full bloom with Joshua Harris's book, I Kiss Dating Goodbye. You've talked about this before. Yeah. And at least to me. Right. And so his book was released, I believe it was in 98. Okay. Um, and he was, so when he wrote the book, he was 19 years old, had not been in a relationship, not had sex, obviously not married. And totally qualified. Completely qualified. <laughs> God almighty. Um, and it promoted courting over dating. So don't date. What's the difference? Court. So they would say courting is being done under the kind of the umbrella security of parents. And so you would never be alone with an individual. It would always be done in the kind of family context. So if you were going to, you know, if I was going to invite a girl over or want to hang out with a girl, or whatever, it would be inviting her over to the house or going and watching a movie with the family, that kind of thing. Um, and so, so it was courting, you know, so, so court, don't date. No kissing, um, obviously no sex before marriage, and and kind of the part that really pushed the envelope was that Harris stated that if you had sex before marriage, you were actually like giving part of yourself away. Is is that not what the Bible believes? Well, the Bible. Well, the Bible. We we can talk about things like soul ties and that kind of stuff, but it's not like. It's not like if I, if I, the way it came across when Harris it's presented not like it. He's got my toe. Well, well, yeah. I mean, like when Harris presented it, it was like, okay, now, now you're not whole anymore. Oh. Like you're not a whole person anymore. Like part of your soul or something has been taken. He stole it. Right. Right. And so 
that's so now it's like all right so you'll say you've had sex before marriage so now when you get married it's like well sorry i'm not a whole person not a whole person anymore. yeah like part of me has been taken you know or given to somebody else and so obviously that's problematic um and well maybe i used to think about this more than <laughs> maybe i used to th- Maybe my my mindset was more than that than I used to think or that I think right now. Okay. I guess maybe I maybe I believed I like I believed that at some point. Okay. Well, you probably did. Yeah. I mean, you were raised in a yeah. conservative evangelical church that probably had a strong purity culture built yeah. into it. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah, you were probably taught that. Yeah. Um and But how is that wrong then? Like yeah. like what is that like what is a soul tie versus a piece of yeah, me is missing? Sure. Well, I think a I think a soul tie. If you want to, if we're going to get into this, like a soul tie for me is that yeah, there's a connection that I have with somebody else. Okay. okay. And that because there was an intimacy experienced with that individual, mm-hmm. right? And so there is a tie in that sense, but it's not like so. The, so there's this connection, but it's not like I can't be whole on right. the other okay. side of that. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I think that's kind of the message that came across. It was like, and not even just by Harris, but by other writers as well and teachers during that time. Right. It was like, no, you're like, you're you're like, you're giving, you know, again, part of yourself away. Um, and, and so, and, <laughs> and then the book also promised, and if you've kind of follow these rules, you court, you don't have sex before marriage, these kind of things, you're gonna have a great marriage. Because this guy knew that. You're, you're right. At 19. You're, right. You're gonna have you're gonna have great sex in that marriage. And this virgin knew that uh-huh. at 19. Right. And and that, you know what? God will even bless you with children. Oh. Yeah. So you don't have Cause... to worry about, you know, the whole cell, you know, you don't have to worry about not being gonna have kids. Like you're gonna be oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. So if you wait, God's gonna fix gonna reward you. Potential uh what is it called? Imp- impotency? Yeah. Issues. Yeah. You're right? going to be, well, or what gonna, is it called? Uh, barrenness. Yes. God yeah. will fix your barrenness. Yeah. You win. Or you'll be rewarded with kids. Okay. And so <laughs> that's, and so anyways, again, I could launch off on the tangents on all these things, but that's in, that's in essence kind of where it started. And again, Harris's book, I Kiss Dating Goodbye was launched it. And, and I do want to be clear that later on Harris denounced his own book. Oh, once he got married and had sex and, and realized he and, was an idiot? Yeah. Correct. Okay. And 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 really, uh, well, the sad part for Harris is actually now, because he was on staff at a church for a really long time, he actually is no longer even following Christ. Did he even make it? I think he did. Like I, I, I can't be 100% sure. Okay. And But I do know that he's no longer even following Christ. That's because everything was riding on his virginity. Well, I think, and, and can you imagine the pressure, or not only the pressure, but like how you feel now as you're older, reflecting and looking back at the damage you caused mm-hmm. as a young man, like, you know, and, but you can't blame Harris. He was 19 years old when he wrote the book, 20 when it came out. You so blame, he started speaking when he was 20 and 21 years old. Blame the people that promoted him. Exactly. Blame the people that should have known better. Right. And yet we're allowing this kid. He was like kid. Christian Greta. <laughs> Yeah, they're allowing this kid to go and talk about these things when, honest to God, he really had no idea. No, I mean, no, he, <laughs> he was too young. He wasn't married, right? Or, <laughs> or even, or even just knowledgeable enough, right? And so, but anyway, we'll get into some of the consequences of it and some of the responses that happened during that time later. Unbelievable. So.